This video is sponsored by The Walking Dead No Man's Land, which is the official game that follows the TV series The Walking Dead. I put a link down in the description so you can download the game for free, and it comes with a special offer I'll tell you about in a couple of minutes. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Nate. Thanks for joining us today on The King of Random. In the past, we've had several videos showing you a bunch of different life hacks. Well, today we've got 10 different survival hacks we're going to show you. These are all little ideas you might be able to use in an emergency situation to help yourself out. Whether you're camping, hiking, exploring, or it's the end of the world, these are some tips you might find useful. How to make a compass using a cup of water, a pocket knife, and a needle. It doesn't need to be a needle. Any piece of straight metal that sticks to a magnet should work just fine. The first step is to take your pocket knife and line it up on the edge of your needle. You're then going to run the blade of the knife along the needle in the same direction 50 to 100 times. After about 100 passes, the needle should have picked up a slight magnetic charge. Next, we want to cut out a small circle of paper that easily fits within the cup, but is large enough that it's almost the size of the needle. If you don't have regular paper, you can also use toilet paper, paper towel, or even a smooth leaf. If your needle is properly magnetized, it will orient itself facing north and south. Because the orientation of the needle depends on which tool you use to magnetize it, check your surroundings for context clues to figure out which direction is north and south. That's a quick and easy way to make yourself a compass. If you're lost and need to signal for help, one of the easiest ways to do that is with a whistle. And there's an extremely easy way you can make a whistle with a hard candy. In fact, we don't need the candy at all, rather we need the wrapper that it comes in. Simply take an edge of the wrapper and pull it tight between your fingers and then blow on the tight edge. If your pocket had a pocket, you could fit this whistle in that pocket. This type of whistle takes up virtually no space whatsoever, so it's great for emergency packs. One of the most important things to do if you're in a survival situation is to make sure you have enough water. Let's take a look at how you can use a regular soda bottle to efficiently collect rainwater. Obviously, if you just leave a soda bottle open, it's not gonna catch much rainwater, and even if you cut off the top, your area is gonna be pretty limited. So this hack is to show you how to get the most out of your soda bottle in collecting rainwater. The first step is to cut off either the top or the bottom of your soda bottle, depending on how you want to let it sit. If you just want it to sit on a flat surface, remove the top. If you have some sand or loose dirt, and you want to be able to push your bottle down into that, remove the bottom. Since I'm doing this demonstration on a tabletop, I'm going to remove the top of my soda bottle. With the top removed, let's cut strips into the side of the bottle, starting about two inches up. Now what we want to do is take each of these pieces we've just cut and bend them out. You can see that if you just bend them, the plastic doesn't like to stay in place. An easy fix is to take a lighter and apply a little bit of heat right at the curve. It will only take a second, and then the plastic will hold itself folded down. If any of the little pieces need adjusting, just apply a little bit more heat and bend it either up or down. Now as rain falls on your bottle, it will be collected by the branches extending outward. Someday you may find yourself wanting to fish for food, but not having any bait. Here's a quick way to make yourself an easy fishing lure to try and catch yourself some dinner. All we need is some paracord, a fish hook, a lighter, and a knife. To start off, we want to cut off a piece of our paracord about an inch and a half long. Pull the inside strands of your paracord so they extend about half an inch beyond the regular body of the cord. We then want to cut off some of the excess back of the cord, so we only have three quarters to one inch of our paracord left. You should be able to see the inside cord lined up with the top where you just cut it. We now want to feed our paracord onto the fish hook from the end that doesn't have the strands sticking out. The fish hook will stick out through the side of the paracord. Smooth the top of the cut end together and fuse it all using your lighter. With the paracord attached, we now want to fray out the main body of the cord and the ends of the inner strands. At this point, your fishing lure is complete, so it's time to attach it to a line and catch yourself some dinner. If you're out hiking or camping and you don't have dry, usable toilet paper, it can certainly feel like the end of the world. Here's a little hack you can use to keep your toilet paper dry and usable while you're camping. First step is to get yourself an empty plastic coffee container with a lid that comes on and off. Now there are three different things we need to cut out of our container. The first is a slit, the same width as our toilet paper in the main body, and then we need to cut two holes, one in either end. With your pieces cut out, remove the lid and put your toilet paper roll inside the container. You should be able to feed the toilet paper through the slot you cut, and now you have a nice toilet paper dispenser. Now to take our dispenser one step further, I'm going to take a length of rope and pass it through the container and the toilet paper roll inside. We can now hang our toilet paper roll next to whatever we're using out in the wilderness. There you have it, an easy toilet paper dispenser that keeps your TP nice and dry. 
And hey guys, Grant here for a second. In the spirit of apocalyptic camping hacks, I've put a link at the top of the description to a free game with a special offer available only right now. It's called The Walking Dead No Man's Land, and it's AMC's official mobile game that follows The Walking Dead series on TV. The game uses characters you know from the TV show The Walking Dead in the actual Walking Dead locations. Now if you download the game before December 19th, you'll have access to unlock Negan for free. And there's weekly content being put out to follow every episode in season eight. The updates come out each Monday after the episodes post and these missions follow the survivors of The Walking Dead and offer another glimpse and angle into the events of that week's episode of the show. So not only do you get to hang out with your favorite characters like Daryl, Rick, Michonne, and Negan, but you get to relive and replay the highlights from the episode you saw the day before. So about the game, you basically take turns moving people around and then the walkers take turns moving as well. It does help to use a bit of strategy and some tactical maneuvers. If you can line up enough walkers in a row, you might get three of them with one shot. That's always helpful. And the better you position your team, the better chance you have of winning. And there's some back-end strategy as well because not only are you playing the game, but you have an encampment that you can develop, add to, and build out and fortify that'll give you some benefits to help move you through the game. It works on iOS, Android, and pretty much any other device, and it's a really fun way to develop strategy and spend your time. So if you like zombies, want to help rescue humanity, and hang out with characters you know and love, go down to the first link in the description and download the game for free. And now that we've talked about that, let's get back to the hacks. Let's say you're out in the wilderness and you need to cut a piece of rope, but for some reason you don't have a knife with you. Well, don't worry, there's a way you can actually cut the rope with the rope itself. First is to measure off the length that you need to use. Let's say I need exactly that much rope. Now I'm going to tie two knots on either end of where I want the rope cut. This will help prevent fraying later. Now you'll want to put your rope on the ground and step on it on both sides of your knots. Run the other end of your rope between the first part and begin sawing back and forth. Where the friction and the heat from the sawing motion will eventually cut its way through the rope. Like I said, the knots help prevent the rope from fraying too much after it splits. Cold wind and rain can really exacerbate any bad situation. And if you've got leaky clothing or shoes, it can make it even worse. One way to temporarily relieve those symptoms is to use a lip balm as a sealant against water and wind. One of the most common places for hiking boots to start leaking is right around the seams. If you take a little bit of lip balm and spread it along the stitching and then heat it with a lighter, the oils from the lip balm can penetrate the material and really help stop the water from getting in. Similarly, cold air and water can sometimes leak in through the zipper of a coat, so you can use your chapstick on the zipper to try and help form a little bit more of a barrier. It's not a great permanent fix, but it should work in a pinch. If you desperately need your chapstick to keep your lips from splitting in bad weather, I wouldn't recommend you use it on your shoes and your jacket. If water getting into your clothing is a bigger problem, it might be worth it to you. Lip balm is made mostly of oil, which means in an emergency, we can use it to burn for light or heat. Using any sort of container that will hold it, we can add a wick and light it on fire. I have here a piece of cotton cloth that I cut off of an old backpack. This should work well as a wick for our makeshift oil lamp. You can use just about anything as a container while this burns. A pot, a metal cup, a rock with a little concave divot in it. And I'm just going to use a piece of foil with the edges folded up. Extend your lip balm all the way out and remove it from the plastic container entirely. At this point what you have is basically a stick of thick oil. As the fire starts heating and melting the lip balm, it will begin to burn the oil as fuel instead of the cotton cloth. You can see that the lip balm has melted and started puddling down at the bottom. The conditions we have outside right now is a little windy, but that actually helps to illustrate how useful this can be. If you have a match that won't stay lit, you can light your piece of cotton on fire in the oil, and it will keep burning for quite a while. You can use this as light or a source of heat to start a bigger fire. Oh, now it's spread oil everywhere. <laughs> well, I tried to pick it up and I dropped it, and it spread oil all over the sides of the container, so now all of it's on fire. There's enough oil in one tube of lip balm to burn for up to 20 minutes. I'm a firm believer that you should always bring the equipment that you're going to need with you when you go out into the wilderness, but it doesn't hurt to provide yourself with a backup. This little fire starter kit is available at most camping stores. It has a ferrocerium rod and a block of magnesium. You can use this to start fires pretty easily. We're going to try to remove the striker rod and embed it in the shoelaces of our boots so that we always have a backup fire starter in case we lose everything else. First thing we need to do is remove the rod from the magnesium block it's attached to. That popped off pretty easily. There's still a little bit of epoxy attached to our stick, so I'm going to try and clean that off with a knife. Now let's grab a hacksaw and cut this in half. Ooh. Cut it fast enough it sparkles. Ooh. 
That is the most entertaining thing to cut in half I have ever cut in half. That is great. If everything sparked like that when you cut it, I would just saw things in half probably all day long. We now have our two different halves of our striker rod. Shoelaces are often a little bit too thin, so we're going to replace the shoelaces on this boot with paracord. Cut a length of paracord to the same length as the shoelace on your boot, and then fuse one end with a lighter. Pull back the end of the paracord and pull out the center strands a couple of inches. We want to cut off some of the center strands a little bit longer than the length of our striker rod. Pull the outside of the paracord back into place so that you can feel that part of it's hollow and part of it still has the center strands. When you compress the paracord down together, it loosens up and expands in width. Press it down a little bit and fit your striker rod down inside the hollow portion of the paracord. Once your entire striker is inside the paracord, use your lighter to seal off the end. You can decide if you want both halves of your striker rod in one boot or if you want to split it up so one is in each shoelace. If you're in an emergency situation where you need the striker rod to make fire, simply cut open the paracord and remove the rod. A good place to store the striker for your rod is underneath the sole of your boot. I'm going to use a small piece of this tape to hold the striker in place on the sole of the boot. Now in an emergency situation, I have a flint rod and a striker always attached to my boots. You may someday find yourself in a situation where your cell phone has a dead battery and you have no good way to charge it. Well, here's how you can take a car phone charger, a nine volt battery, and a key to charge your cell phone. Simply plug your charger into your phone, touch the protruding end of your charger to the smaller terminal of a nine volt battery. Now using a house key, a paper clip, or any other conductive piece of metal, connect the other two terminals together. If you don't want to constantly be holding the charger, battery, and key together, of course you can use some tape to secure it all into position. There you have it, 10 different life hacks that can help you in camping, hiking, emergency, and survival situations. Hopefully you'll never find yourself in a situation where your life depends on one of these survival hacks, but knowing them ahead of time could be important to you in the future. From gathering water to making tools to finding help, all of these have a useful purpose in the wilderness. If you know of a good survival hack that you think might be able to help other people, let us know down in the comments and we might include it in a future video. Thank you for joining us for this project today and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then. That wasn't so good. Also, by far the best flavor selection of Jolly Rangers. Hey guys, quick reminder, there's a link in the description to download The Walking Dead No Man's Land for free. If you download the game before December 19th, you'll unlock the character Negan. Happy hunting, boys. What's up guys, Grant here. I'm just working behind the scenes on some important stuff. Keep supporting Nate, he's the man, and he's bringing back all the DIY that you've been asking for.